So, today we're going to look into Mark Hamill's Last Jedi troll then. And first of all, he mentions that the villains are always lurking or looming at the back of the Star Wars posters. Even with Anakin at the back of this one, because, like, obviously Anakin eventually becomes Darth Vader. Um... And, like, Luke is at the back of this one, so does that mean that Luke becomes a villain? Anyway. <clears throat> um, so, here we have Rey at the back of this one. So does that mean Rey becomes a villain? I've looked at life from both sides now. From light and dark, and still somehow, it's life's illusions, I recall. I really don't know life at all. When you realise that Luke is part of the dark side poster too. Does this suggest that Luke may be a grey Jedi now? We'll just have to wait and see. Even this thing. See Maz right there. Just like Maz Kanada. And obviously, um, Luke and Ray's got similar facial expressions there that suggest that maybe they're related somehow. Um, so we have this poster here, and obviously Kylo and Snoke are lurking at the back of this one. Now... It begs the question, like, who are actually the villains here? Are Rey, Luke, Kylo and Snoke, are they all villains in this movie? And then Finn, Poe, Rose and Leia, they're the heroes. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. But... There is a chance that Kylo could be redeemed and he could come back to the light. Uh, whereas Rey, it could be a totally different journey for her. It could be the, the total opposite journey. Like she could go from light to dark. But um, yeah, so I mean, like... To be honest, I really loved, like, the scenes in Force Awakens where BB-8 was with Rey. But it seems like in this Last Jedi movie that he's going to be with Poe most of the time, which is okay, but I, I would much prefer it if BB-8 was with Rey. But we won't go too much into that because that's straying off the point. But So, if you're going to compare The Last Jedi to Empire Strikes Back, then it would make sense if BB-8 was with Rey, because, remember, R2 was with Luke on Dagobah. I mean, this thing right here, it goes back to what I was saying in a previous video, where the First Order are terrorists, just like the Rebel Alliance. And that is why I think Luke might suddenly join the First Order. I'm, I mean, that could be... The cliffhanger at the end of the film. Going off of the subject of Star Wars slightly, um, I'm very glad that Wonder Woman has received the accolade of number one superhero origin film because I don't think that Deadpool deserved it because Deadpool, it was just like telling the origin story that we already knew. Whereas Wonder Woman's origins in the Wonder Woman movie is different to her origins in the TV series of Wonder Woman. Because um, I don't think we even saw her origins in that um, TV series, did we? I'm not entirely sure because I haven't watched like that whole series, but you know... Actually, that's why I liked Man of Steel, because even though it followed the same basic 
concepts of Superman's origin, there were a few differences. So, back to Star Wars, and these two shots are very similar. Now, that could be because Anakin and Rey are related somehow. Or it could be um, that The Last Jedi is the second film in the sequel trilogy, just like Attack of the Clones was the second film in the prequel trilogy. Or it could be a combination of both of those things. Like, Because, after all, George Lucas, he said that the prequel trilogy was supposed to mirror the original trilogy. So, is J.J. Abrams trying to mirror the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy with this sequel trilogy? Well, I mean, obviously he can do that with ease with episodes 9 and 7, but he, he can't do that so well with episode 8 because that would... That film um, has mostly been in Ryan Johnson's hands. But obviously, JJ still has some sort of input. I would imagine that was contracted. So, to celebrate Wonder Woman's success, we'll finish with these two pictures of Gal Gadot with her shoes off. 